Today it is time to put the Dyson V10, formerly with a smash chassis, now without a smash chassis, back together and see if we can get a working cleaner out of what was a pile of scrap with a broken cyclone and a motor that had been on fire. So let's get this done. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? Yes, we need to get this back together because its owner would rather like it back. So we'll put the battery and the charger to one side for now because we don't need those. And we'll start with all of this. And what we shall start with first is, and I'll move some bits out of the way, Getting the cyclone back on this very exciting of jobs. So the first thing that we shall do is put our foam gasket back onto here, making sure it sits flush and goes around the top part. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Then, no, wait, we need to do... Ah, I've got two. I washed a few bits from both up, and that's what's slightly confusing me. This part here slides into place. There's a little slider. This is going to be difficult for me to show on this bit, but basically there's two sliding tabs that go on there, and that's all you need to know. We also need to put our red gasket on which needs to sit nice and flush where it should and then this part drops back onto there and should sit nice and flush obviously all the side bits will pop up there's not a lot you can do about that for now until we put the top cover on which is going to need a bit of maneuvering but eventually we'll go into place and then we can take our four long cyclone screws remember which of the many different types of screwdrivers we needed for this task and then hoping that the magnetism in them stays good screw them back into place With our slightly assembled cyclone, we can place the start of the, the whole body of the cleaner, really, I suppose, onto position. And then we can fit the two long screws here at the back to start with. And then you have to get the shroud, unless you have a very good memory, and sort of start to roughly put it into place, mainly so that you can work out there's three holes here and you have to keep three free. So going with that, we can put our other two screws into where they need to go. With that done, we can put our middle part gasket back in and again it's going to be a bit of a fiddle to push it back into place this i didn't actually go to remove this it fell off when i was washing it but it's going together not too bad the problem will be when you push the foam on and you stretched it in the process With this part fairly well built up, we now need to turn our attention back to this and the incredible fun of the two wires that need to go back into their plug. First off, because it's a lot easier now, 
we're going to fit our cyclone seal, which again is very fiddly. through the channel and then almost put this back together in fact that may not be a terrible idea because it will hold itself in place and we need all the slack we can get on these little wires so put the four screws back in Then once you have this back into place, this is all you have to play with, that length of wire. Luckily, it's enough just to pop this back on and the wires clip on. And again, it's very fiddly. I'm probably not going to be able to show you, but eventually you'll have them looking like this. You will have it clipped together. And, oh my goodness, is it a horrible, horrible job. And then you've got to try and push it back down into the abyss without it falling apart. And eventually, it'll sit itself back down. And there, look, there it is. Right, let's get the shroud on. And we actually need to remove this rubber seal. I thought about it during one of the other shots because yeah, we need to slide this on. Now it all literally lines up precisely. Oh no. <laughs> Guess what? The shroud goes on before that bit. Oh. <sighs> little tip that I have just discovered to get a lot more length on your cable is actually to cut there's a little ferrite bead there it is look that was held in with insulation tape it now very much isn't and I don't think it's going to harm the machine at all because obviously it's still in there. The reason I took this back off is that the cable was binding up before I could push that part fully in. Because again, it's got a little bit of extra flex on it now. So, with a little bit of twisting, we can put this back on. So yes, comb first, then the seal on this, and then screw it all together until it's all together. That is that bit pretty much done because we can't put the bin on or do anything else until we have populated the motor back into where it needs to go and that has to start actually by feeding the switch assembly back up it's very little hole where the cables are going to need some bending straight and persuading on what not to get through, minding your little sensor wire. I'm sure that little wire there runs the battery percentage, not percentage, it's not a V11, is it the battery indicator? Oh, our spring has popped out as well. Off the switch, we just need to pop that back in as well. Otherwise, we're going to have a bad time.
And eventually, with a lot of swearing, you can feed these three wires through the little hole. Let's just put the screw deep down into the switch to hold it all in place so it doesn't fall back out again. It's a fairly easy screw to see. So you should be all right. I think that's it. No, wait, that's not even in properly. Ah. Bother. Oh, you know it's in place because the switch is level with where it should be. Crikey, these do do not think that these are not fiddly machines, folks. They are. This is. It's not difficult. It's just fiddly. Now, oh, I mean, it's easier again to bend two terminals. We have to slide this cover piece over all of the wires, which are going to want to go through because there's a lot of rubber in here. Okay, a pair of pliers just to help the connectors out would be wise. But eventually it will sit and clip. There are two clips at the front into place. And then we'll put our two screws in. With all the cables buttoned up and the cover on, we can now turn our attention very quickly to stuffing the sponge post motor diffuser into the housing and pushing the motor itself in. Then we actually need this the little circuit board for the speed control because it pushes in that side. And then this goes on and you've now got two sets of wires to fiddle into their little holes, the bottom set and the top one. Once fully into position, we can wire up the two thick PCB wires. With all of the wires buttoned up and plugged in, we can slide the motor cover over. Yet another plug. This time the plug that feeds the entire brush roll housing really. And that needs to be pulled up slightly. And then the four screws can go back into the motor cover. With just the bottom two screws fitted, we can now, actually, before we put the cyclone on, we best fit this part, because it's a lot easier. In fact, it's possibly impossible whilst it's fitted to the machine. So we'll get that in. With this one screw for now. And then the whole thing should slide together. If it doesn't, you've just not quite got it as it wants to be. It's going to be a very finite fit. It should be a very easy slide. And then, there, sort of hold it as best you can and just get a couple of the rear motor screws back in. Then that will hold it. Yeah, that's putting that together. And yeah, just fill it up with screws. With everything now looking remarkably like the scrap body that we bought in the first place, we can fit the bin. Like so. 
let the wire go on like that. We can fit the battery back in and do up the three crosshead screws. And with the battery on, it won't work because uh, and I vacuumed this, it's not been washed. I haven't quite got the time to wash and dry it, so I told the owner to. Hey. It all works rather well as a handheld. Let's just check that all the wiring is correct through the whole thing and that the brush roll works. I forgot just how horrible this V10 head is compared to the V11. It works, it's not chucked all that dust straight back onto the filter, so I think we are good to go. Yes, there is a little blob of dirt just hiding in there. So, another one done. And actually, in addition to the last video, I did find out why this died. It had been used to clean out a fireplace of its ash and my goodness ash is right up there with plaster dust in what you must never put through any Dyson at all especially not a cordless and then that got me thinking that's probably why the little components bloom from its motor really I think it just got so overwhelmed it was pushing so much voltage through apparently they just sort of blow off cleanly if they fail or just go open circuit that to have blown about that is apparently mucky power but yeah the thing was in a state now it works fine again all using this is making me realize just what an improvement my v11 is so yes it works again the cyclone is fixed we have a nice silver cyclone compared to our red one and that is another Dyson save ready for another couple of years worth of use before it clogs itself up again or breaks. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this double video of completely stripping and reassembling a V10. Hopefully it's a better quality of video than before. Please comment with any things you might want to say and there we go really one dyson v10 this is probably one of the only videos on youtube where one of these comes fully apart thank you very much for watching and i will see you soon bye bye